Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now answering question number three from the October November 2004 paper three, pure mathematics three paper from Cambridge 9709. And this is also question number two on my endotopic worksheet for algebraic division, endotopic worksheet number one from my P3 um, Cambridge collection of worksheets. And this question here is about algebraic division. And it tells us the polynomial 2x cubed plus ax squared minus 4 is denoted by p of x. So p of x is equal to 2x cubed plus ax squared minus 4. It is given that x minus 2 is a factor of px. Find the value of a. So if x minus 2 is a factor, Okay, then what we can say is when we replace 2 inside this function, then we should get 0. So whatever makes this bracket 0, so x minus 2 is equal to 0, so x equals 2. So when I put 2 inside this function, it has to become 0. All right, so if f minus 2 is a factor, p2 equals 0, so we can use that fact to find what a is. Okay, so this is how we deal with a question such as this. Um, sometimes it might say is given that uh, when... Um, divided by x minus 2 the remainder is 3 or something like that then you can say that p2 is equal to 3 all right in this case if it's a factor the remainder will be 0 when you divide by it all right so uh, if you put whatever makes this bracket 0 into the function it'll tell you what the remainder is basically and if the remain if it's a factor the remainder will be 0 so i know that p2 is equal to 0 so if i know that p2 is equal to 0 i know that when i put 2 inside this function 0 will come out so I have 0 equals 2 times 2 cubed plus a times 2 squared minus 4. That's going to be 2 times 8, which is 16, plus 4a minus 4 is equal to 0. So 4a plus 12 is equal to 0. So solving this equation, we're left with a equals 12, negative 12 over 4. Subtract 12 and divide by 4. So a equals negative 3 and we found the value of a. Okay, so there's part one done, all right? Now for part two, it says, when a has this value, factorize p of x. Okay, so we know that p of x is, as I told us, 2x cubed plus ax, so it's gonna be minus 3x squared, 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus four, and we want to find, we want to factorize this fully. We know that, x minus 2 is a factor all right so we want to now factorize this so we have to basically find the quotient first when this is divided by x minus 2 so somebody was asking when do we use the product when do we use long division and when do we use um you know the factor theorem or the remainder theorem okay if the question just says you know find the remainder okay when something you know when you know that something is um, divided by such and such then you use the, the the remainder theorem okay you just put whatever makes the bracket zero into the thing and then you see what comes out as a as a remainder if they say that find the value of a when x minus 2 is a factor of p of x then you would replace you know the x with whatever makes the bracket zero here too and show that the remainder is zero by making it equal to zero and then find the value of a. There's no need for you to start doing long division for a question like this. It will become complicated. Just so you know that when 2 is put in here, it's going to give you 0. You can find the value of a. All right. In this case, all right, we know x minus 2 is a factor. But using the factor theorem, we'll just show that this thing becomes 0, which we know already. If you want to find, if you want to factorize it, we want to find the quotient. Now, the factor theorem and the remainder theorem doesn't give us the quotient. It doesn't give us what comes out when you divide them. So here we have to use long division or we could use some other methods which is like um, one of them is called um, you know comparing coefficients and stuff but i'll show you how to use long division which is the most popular one so we have x minus 2 you want to divide that into 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4 and then whatever is the quotient will be on top and the remainder should be zero because we know x minus 2 is a factor so for sure the remainder is going to be zero we know that but we want to find out what the quotient is how much, what, what the, the whole number part is, which will be what's left over here. And then if, the, if we can factorize it further, then we'll factorize that further. So when you write down anything in this long division, you should always make sure there's nothing missing. And if anything's missing in terms of any of the orders of the terms, you have to put zero in that place. So here we go, x cubed term, we've got an x term, x squared term, 
we don't have an x term we have a, a constant term so we should write it like this to make sure everything falls in the right place so 2x cubed minus 3x squared i'm going to put plus 0x because there's no x term all right so plus 0x and then minus 4 that will make sure everything falls in the right place when you're doing your um, long division so then we say okay x times something gives me 2x cubed well that's 2x squared and 2x squared times x is 2x cubed 2x squared times minus 2x squared times minus 4 is minus 4x sorry times minus 2 is minus 4x squared and then we've got to subtract these be careful with the signs when you're subtracting because this will give you 0 minus 3x squared minus minus 4x squared is going to be plus x squared because you're going to have to add these minus 3 plus 4 gives me 1 1 so that's 1x one squared bring down the next term which is 0x even if it's 0x you bring it down x goes into x squared one x times so you have plus x x times x minus 2 is x squared minus 2x and then when you subtract these that gives you 0 and that gives you 2x bring down the next term which is minus 4 x times 2 is 2x so you put plus 2 here 2 times 2x my 2 times x minus 2 gives you 2x minus 4 as it should do because this should give you a 0 remainder which we know for sure should happen because this is a factor of that but now what's happened is we can now say px is equal to x minus 2 times 2x squared plus x plus 2 so now we have um, you know factorized this to a certain extent now can we factorize it further well we have we're going to check will this factorize 2x squared plus x plus 2 can we express it as um, a product of factors We'll see if it, if it can be factorized further. Okay, so um, if you look at this, you'll see that you have to fi have find two numbers that multiply to give you four. The product is four. And when you add them together, you're supposed to get one. Okay, that won't work, will it? There will be no such numbers because if the product is four, the only possibilities are two times two. And of course, they both have to have the same sign, so that's not going to give you one as a sum. And the other possibility is 4 times 1. That will give you 4, but it won't give you 1 as a sum. They're all both positive because both terms um, multiply to give you a positive number and they add to give you a positive number. They must both be the same sign. They must both be positive. So the only two options are these. None of them will work. So this does not factorize any further. So the question said, factorize P of X. So we have finished. This is our answer. We have factorized it as far as it will factorize. It won't factorize any further than that. Okay. So that's done. And then it says solve the inequality px is greater than 0, justifying your answer. So px is greater than 0. Okay. So we've got to solve the inequality. x minus 2 times 2x squared plus x plus 2 is greater than 0. So we've got to solve this inequality. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, find out when px is equal to 0. When does it equal 0? So you have x minus 2 times 2x squared plus x plus 2 equals 0. So it equals 0 when x minus 2 equals 0, and when 2x squared plus x plus 2 equals 0. So when x equals 2, okay, that's one place where it equals 0. The other place is when this equals 0. Now, does this equal 0? Um, let's have a look. Let's look at the discriminant. We'll say, um, let's find out how many solutions it has. So we're going to use b squared minus 4ac and see what it gives you. Now, the discriminant, because this is a quadratic, this part here, this, this particular equation we've got. So if the discriminant of this equation is um, positive, we'll have two solutions, and then we can use the quadratic formula to solve it, it, or completing the square. If it has one solution, which I don't think it does because it doesn't factorize, then it would uh, this would equal zero. And if it has no solutions, then the, the, the discriminant will be negative, which means that this will be the only place that this equals zero, then we can proceed to answer the question. So b squared minus 4ac, so b is 1, so 1 squared minus 4 times 2 times 2, and we can see obviously this is going to give you 1 minus 16, which is negative 15, so we can say b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, therefore there's no solution. There's no solution, which means, so x minus 2 is the only solution, x equals 2 is the only solution, so that's the only place this crosses the x-axis. Okay, so now, if we think about this graph, uh, the graph of this function, it crosses the x-axis at minus 4, okay, and then it crosses the y-axis the the, the at minus 4, 
and then it crosses the x-axis at 2 right and it doesn't cross the x-axis anywhere else so either the graph will look something like um, something like this or it would look something like this all right in either case it's going to just cross the x-axis at 2 all right so let me just show you that again we could find out further if we wanted to we don't really need to, to answer this question but we could we could find out further if we wanted to where it crosses the um where it turns and we could find out more so either the graph will be something like this okay where it goes through minus four and two or i'll show you the other option that it will turn once twice and then carry on going up and cut through two so there's two options both options we can see that when x is greater than two when x is more than two the graph will satisfy this condition okay of the inequality px is greater than zero so px is greater than zero when x is greater than two we don't put equal to because that doesn't say equal so so we know that it hits zero at one place two because there's only one solution to this and we know that it's a type of graph because it's got it's, it's it was 2x cubed um plus x plus 2 no sorry 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4 that was p of x so we know that it has this type of shape for sure right because it has that type of shape then we know that it's going to either cut through the x-axis and then turn and then turn again before it reaches the y-axis because it only has one root or it turns twice before it hits the x-axis in which case in both cases we'll say x is greater than 2 if we wanted to find out for sure what actually happens to the graph we can take this and we can find where the turning points are so, okay p dash of x is going to give us 6x squared minus 6x so we can find out when this equals 0 all right so we'll have x squared minus x equals 0 so x times x minus 1 equals 0 so when x equals 0 and x equals 1 so in fact it actually turns it turns on the it turns here on the x-axis and then it goes up and turns at 1 so it turns at 0 and 1 and then it goes up so that's actually what the graph looks like so because we found the turning points okay when x equals 0 and x equals 1 we can now imagine what it looks like when x equals 0 of course it's going to be when y equals minus 4 all right so it's going to be it's going to be like this it's going to turn on the way up over there and then again at one okay so it's going to cut through at two so as we can see you know p of x is greater than zero when x is greater than two when x is greater than two okay so i hope that uh, clarifies for you the answer we don't really have to do this sketching and and differentiating i just did it to clarify so you can see exactly how it looks but you can tell from this answer here that definitely it has this shape it's, it's, it's gonna go down it's going up down and up again right and it only has one place where it crosses the x-axis so whether it crossed the x-axis um, in this area here in which case if that was where it crossed the x-axis it wouldn't turn back and hit it or if it crosses the x-axis like we see somewhere over here that means it's already crossed it's already turned before it hits the x-axis twice up down up again so in either case x is greater than 2 is going to be your answer okay um, so you, you should be able to tell that without even working out anything further all right but because um, you know I wanted to show you more detail how it fits with everything else we can we can actually find out where it does turn which is when x equals 0 and x equals 1 so we know that now it turns twice once then and then again and then it cuts through the the the, the has a root here x equals 2 that carries on going up so it's always going to be greater than 0 when x is greater than 2 okay so i hope that was clear um i think that was the part last part of the question so to to solve the inequality we solved it okay by um finding the zero which is x equals two and showing that this has no solution so that means there's only one solution x equals two and just making a sketch of the graph okay like this will show that you know x is greater than two we don't really need to go into any more detail than that it's only worth two marks um and that that's fine Okay, so there's the answer to this question. Other questions, 
from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region here. Okay, other questions from this worksheet can be found in the playlist that will appear at the bottom right of the corner of this screen at the end of the video. Other questions from algebraic division of my P3 in general can be found in this playlist. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.